In this video, I'm going to answer some questions about Dukium F7923 and bust some myths. It's a two or three needles, top and bottom industrial cover stitch, used mainly for hemming, especially knit fabric, and for covering seams. It's mainly used in sewing activewear and underwear, but naturally, it has a few more uses. It is designed to work with light to medium weight fabric, which means it's not a heavy duty machine, but it will easily manage thicker seams on fabrics such as French terry and scuba. The lift of the presser foot is higher if you decide not to use the spreader. You can lift the foot 8 mm then, but the machine will be covering the bottom of the seam only. The top will be two or three needles stitch. With the spreader, the fit lift is five millimeters. That's for top and bottom cover. Your machine head will have a plate with specifications that you can easily decipher. MF79 is the series. 23 is for two, three needles cover. You have a manufacturing number, which is not useful unless you want to track the factory. The class number is in mine U11, that's for universal type, that's the most common cover stitch machine. B56 is the gauge, though mine has actually been changed. So my gauge is B64, despite what it says here. To simplify, the gauge is just the space between the outer needles, so it can be 5.6 millimeters or 6.4 millimeters, that will be the width of the cover. UT51, like in mine, or UT52, or UT57, or UT59, denote the cutter. UT51 and 52 are magnetic, UT57 and 59 are pneumatic. All these Juki manufactured devices cut the top and the bottom thread, so the needles and the looper thread, and lock the stitches. My cutter, UT51, looks like this and the thread is cut from the top by the oval shape device and from the bottom by the sharp plate. So if your dealer tells you that you can't buy a cutter for this machine or that top and bottom thread cutters don't exist, change the dealer. If you only want a bottom thread cutter, you can order a machine with um, UT53, UT55 or UT56 device. It's useful if you never use the spreader and you only cover the bottom. When I lift the foot, you can see that the space under the foot is five millimeters because I'm using the spreader, which covers the top, but limits how high the foot can lift. By the way, the needle bar stroke in this machine is 31 millimeters as standard, but you can adjust it to 35 millimeters for heavyweight fabric. I would recommend consulting your engineer if you are planning to do that and I'm not going to tell you how to do it to avoid any responsibility for badly adjusted needle stroke bar. The stitch length can be adjusted from 0.9mm to 3.6mm. To change the stitch length, turn the feed regulating knob clockwise to make the stitch longer or counterclockwise to make it shorter. If you want to make it longer than 3.6 millimeters, you can push the pin to the end, to the plus, and fix it in place with the screw. But be careful, your feed dogs shouldn't touch the throat plate. They shouldn't be in contact with the throat plate. The real stitch length will always be determined by the fabric you use. So the same settings of the stitch length might look longer or shorter on denser or looser knits. You can adjust the differential feed ratio by loosening the nut and moving the lever up to slightly gather the fabric or down to slightly stretch it. This machine can be micro adjusted by turning the micro adjustment knob. So this is the nut that you need to turn and this is micro adjustment, this one, the longer one. You can change the differential feed ratio by tightening the differential link next to the feed dogs. But again, I would not advise you to do that without consulting your engineer. Before I forget, you ask what's better, a cylinder or a flatbed cover stitch. For other than factory settings, it really does not matter in Juki machines. The flatbed 75 series are trimmed up the front, so you can still get very close to the project. 
The cylinder bud is meant to enable you to be more precise and increase the speed of your work at the same time. In factory settings, you hold your fabric differently and the circular motion helps with speed and precision. If you do more covering than hemming, a flat bed might actually be preferable and are cheaper. I'm going to open the front cover to talk very briefly about the looper threading traps. As you know, the machine needs to be threaded correctly for the stitch to be balanced. In this cover stitch, you might actually change the threading path if you use a stretch thread, but that's in your manual. What's different than in some other cover stitches is that the thread for the looper goes over the knob, not under. It still goes between the tension discs. The trap here is the looper thread cam. The thread goes between the two guides holes and the guide in the cam. You can turn the hand wheel to see if the cam picks it up. The rest of the looper threading is not too tricky. You thread the holes between the long guide, the thread goes behind the long guide, then you have another guide with two holes, then you thread the looper finger from the back, then from the front. The long guide, the thread is behind the two hole guide, then the looper finger from the back and from the front. You don't need to pull the thread onto the plate, cut the tail, leaving about 10 centimeters, 4 inches, and just leave it inside. It will be pulled automatically when you start stitching. Just don't forget to push the cutting plate back and close the front cover. Needle threading is not too tricky and the sticker you get with the machine is relatively clear. You can position the little guide that looks like a sandwich of two tiny plates with a spring inside higher over the needle bar if you use woolly nylon or lower directly over the needle bar if your thread is not stretchy. My guide is placed higher at the moment. Remember that all the guides are going to help the thread not to get tangled, so after using the machine on your project, you might decide what works best for you. We don't normally skip any guides unless it's an alternative recommended by the manufacturer for a special type of thread, for example. The needle thread tension is always a bit tighter than the looper's tension or the spreader's tension. The tension should be tight enough to form a balanced stitch, but not any tighter. Well-set machine will need very few tension adjustments. Also, always make sure that there are no obstacles in the threading path and that the thread moves freely and doesn't get caught anywhere. I'm moving the camera because I want to show you the control box and the operation panel. The control box SC921B is under the table, I'll show you in a second. But any trimmers, also elastic or fabric trimmers, will be connected to the control box. The SC921B control box works with Juki direct drive motor, and that's the operation panel CP18. It's standard for all Juki machines. I'm not going to talk about it much. I'm going to mention the pressure foot pressure knob though. To adjust it, loosen the nut and turn the knob on top clockwise to increase the pressure foot pressure or counterclockwise to decrease it. Remember that fabric must move smoothly under the foot and be easily moved by the feed dogs. Then under this black cap, you have the oil tank entry. So you pour your oil here. For dry head machines, the oil is GK18. You can check if the oil comes out from the nozzle under the C3 cap. And you can check the oil levels in the oil gauge, the round window on the right hand side as you look at the machine or left side of the machine. The oil level needs to be between the upper and lower marks. Okay, let's dive under the table. The on and off switch is on your right or on the left side of the machine. And you can see the control box SC. 91B there. So that's the control box or control unit. The control box is resistant to voltage fluctuations, to noise or vibration. It works with the direct drive motor, saving energy. I think it's 27% less energy. That's the direct drive motor. All Juki made machines with the thread trimmer now have a direct drive motor. Remember, I'm talking about a machine fully manufactured by Juki. It might actually be my favorite myth, unfortunately it's spread by some incompetent dealers, that Juki Corporation doesn't make their own motors or tables. 
They very much do. They are expensive and in a way they force you to buy the top of the range product. But it should be your decision whether you want to pay more for full juki or juki parts or less for just the head. You should make your own decision. But lying to the customers is just wrong. The direct drive motor system means that the machine starts and stops instantly. It's extremely responsive to one single stitch. There is no belt, no belt shavings. The power goes directly from the motor to the machine. But these micro improvements come at a price. This machine is twice the price of the same head with the servo motor. Don't buy a clutch motor if you can avoid it, but a good servo motor will also work amazingly well for half the price. And finally, I wanted to show you which oil I use. So it's Juki Corporation Genuine Oil 18. That's for dry head machines. You change the oil after the first three months and then every half a year. And you can add a few drops of the oil here when you buy the machine when it's totally new. Do not add your oil here. It's for silicon lubricator only. That's enough for today. Like the video if you want to see more. Thank you. Bye.